Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website is eight self improvement lessons that come from my having been a family systems therapist for 31 years and an observer of the human condition for my 73 years. This video is part of lesson four about improving your relationships. I want to offer you what I've learned across the years about relating to difficult people. People who are irritating, frustrating, disrespectful, angry, furtive, dishonest, etc. Think for a moment. Do you have any such people in your life? Adults or children? Are there people who significantly upset you, bother you? How do you relate to those people? Do you avoid them? Are you confrontive? Do you argue? Do you fight? Do you scorn? Do you name call? Do you gossip? What's your attitude about people like that? Do you respect them or disrespect them? Do you look down on them? Do you think they're less than? Are they damaged, weak, sick, stupid? How do you think about people like that? Your attitude leaks and will cause relationship problems. So you bear half the responsibility in case you have a troubled relationship with such a person. I propose after 31 years of reflection and study that people who are difficult to relate to are usually or always survivors of major childhood trauma, abandonment, neglect, and abuse. What that means is that through no wish of their own, they carry up to six psychological wounds. Um, specifically, excessive shame, excessive guilt, excessive fear, problems learning who to trust and who not to trust, significant reality distortion, and difficulty bonding with people and giving and receiving love or friendship. Those are universal psychological wounds in our culture and perhaps the world. They cause problem behaviors. The second half of the cause is ignorance. Difficult people don't know what they don't know. They don't know how to identify and reduce their wounds and they don't know how to behave in a more compatible way. They're ignorant. They're unaware. They were never taught. Now, if you accept this premise, think about the difficult people in your life. Think of them as wounded and unaware, not bad, stupid, ignorant, awful, lousy people. See if that will help you establish a requisite attitude of mutual respect. You have the best odds of relating to difficult people if you have a genuine attitude of compassion for their wounds and their ignorance, which they didn't cause and didn't ask for, compassion and respect for their dignity. No matter how they treat you, their needs and yours are of equal value. Their potential worth as a human being is just as high as yours even though their behavior may make that difficult for you to accept. Think of one or more difficult people, past or present, in your life. Think about how you relate to that person and how that affects your self-esteem. Are you proud of yourself? Do you like the way you relate to them? Do you like the way you communicate with them? Is it effective? Is it satisfying or not? Let me offer you uh, seven specific ideas about how to relate to a, quote, difficult, unquote, meaning psychologically wounded and ignorant person. The very first step is to free your true self to guide you. If you haven't yet come across lesson one in my nonprofit website, this will mean nothing to you. 
most difficult people are ruled by a, quote, false self. If you are ruled by a false self, you will have major relationship difficulties with many people. So the first thing you can do is get curious, who's really running your life? If it's your true self, you're golden. If it's a false self, you have some work to do. Lesson one shows you what to do. Lesson one has some related videos on YouTube, by the way, which will give you a summary of your options. The second thing you can do with difficult people I've already mentioned, which is to grow a genuine attitude, not a dutiful or an intellectual, but a genuine, heartfelt attitude of compassion for these wounded, ignorant people. It's no fun being in their skin. And they have to pretend that they have little problem or none, or they're better than you or other people. Not true. It's a false face. So establish a genuine attitude of respect, despite their behavior. Study lesson two in my website and learn how to assert your opinions and your needs respectfully and effectively, because you usually need to set some limits with troubled people. Learn the skill of respectful assertion Part of that is learning how to deliver respectful I messages, capital letter I. There's another video that explains what this important communication tool is, I messages. Just a quick example. Let's say that someone irritates you and frustrates you uh, because they interrupt you all the time. They're focused on themselves primarily. They put their needs ahead of yours and they disrespect you. You feel disrespected by their behavior. Pretty irritating, isn't it? An assertive I message with such a person after you remind yourself they're wounded and they're ignorant and they don't know any better. A respectful I message might sound like, you know, um, Wanda, are you aware how often you interrupt me? Notice how different that is from saying, you really are thoughtless. You interrupt me all the time. That's an, that's an accusation and a blame that will surely evoke defensiveness, dislike, tension, stress. An I message avoids all that stuff. And if you simply report the other person's behavior, I'm aware that you interrupt me quite often. When you do that, you interrupt me so frequently, I feel irritated and frustrated and disrespected. Repeat this calm, straightforward report to Wanda, quote unquote, um, and do empathic listening as she resists. Expect it. It's normal human behavior. Do it as often as you need to until she A, hears you, or B, um, offers to do some problem solving. <clears throat> so this is one way you can interact with difficult people. Uh, using iMessages goes better if you do a fourth thing for yourself and any partner, which is construct for yourself a list of personal rights, bill of personal rights. What is that? I propose that you and any difficult person, and I and we all, have certain rights as dignified human beings. Many people are only vaguely aware of these rights. All right, here's a couple of examples. I claim the right to my feelings. No one can tell me what I should feel. I claim the right to my opinions. Other people may not agree with them, but I have the right to form my own opinions and conclusions. I have the right to choose who to trust and who not to trust. I have the right to decide how I'm going to behave in any given situation, and I am responsible for the outcome. I claim rights like these, and I propose that you, my partner, you have exactly the same rights as I do. My point here is, if you're hesitant about 
asserting with other people, saying clearly and directly what you feel, what you need, what you perceive. Make a bill of personal rights and refer to it without guilt, without shame. There's an example of a bill of personal rights in Lesson 4 in the Break the Cycle website. I invite you to check it out, see what it looks like, and then make your own. Another useful thing to keep in mind when you're confronted with the behavior that frustrates or irritates you from a, quote, problem person, meaning a wounded person, keep in mind that there's a difference between the behavior and the person. The behavior may be, quote, bad or unpleasant or unhealthy or immoral or whatever your inner critic wants to judge it. That does not mean the person is bad. What it does suggest is the person is an unaware, grown, wounded child, GWC, uh, who did not ask for these wounds, survived major trauma as a very young child, and wasn't taught some really important information. It's not their fault. That doesn't mean you have to accept their irritating or frustrating or demeaning behavior. Keep the difference in mind between their behavior and their dignity as a person. Another suggestion I want to offer you is in case you empathize strongly with a difficult person, meaning a wounded, unaware person, you may have a part of your personality that wants to rescue this person, and save them, and show them the way, and point out what the problem is. Let me tell you, you're wounded, you're unaware. I respectfully suggest that's a lose-lose option. Have you ever noticed if someone tries to help you and you haven't asked for help, you know how that feels? At the very least, it feels disrespectful. Oh, you know how to live my life better than I do? So be alert and avoid rescuing troubled people. Generally, that will backfire on you and increase the tension in and between you. What you can do instead of that is, at an appropriate time, ask the person if they're open to feedback. Be ready if they say no or why or no, I don't care. If they're open to feedback, what you can do is alert them respectfully, calmly, without moralizing. So, you know, Many of us survived a tough childhood and we gained some psychological wounds that affect our behavior and can interfere with harmonious relations. I found a resource that might help you understand this better. I think you might find it useful. It's lesson one in the Break the Cycle website at sfhelp.org. You can alert people uh, and then let go. You are not responsible for saving this person. You may wish you could. Pay attention to your own wounds. Reduce your own wounds. Put your true self in charge. Learn effective communication skills. Study lesson one. Study lesson two and learn how to communicate effectively with anybody, not just troubled people. And study lesson four, which is about improving your relationships. This video has been part of what you can learn in Lesson 4. It's how to get along better with people who vex and irritate and frustrate you. Frustrate you. They're wounded and unaware. Keep that in mind the next time someone, quote, bothers you, unquote. Thanks for watching.